Hello YouTube, ad 6 dm Dennis here and I am in Stockton, California in my garage right now and working on my battery project, I gotta get the wiring done and it's uh, really quite a lot of work, I wasn't expecting this much but um, let me uh, give you a little uh, view of what it is right now and hopefully it will look nice after I'm uh, all through I'm trying I'm still trying to figure out how to get the there's the dual uh, power pole mount on there and that's uh, I'm working with some pretty thick wire um, 12 gauge wire and so I don't know how to double that up even with a 45 amp um, contact stick into there so we'll figure that out might have to make a Y cable or something like that but otherwise um, it's looking all right here let me give you a look so here we are most of the stuff is all set up but I'm um, still trying to figure out what to do with this uh, this relay and I'm about to get this going here which is the um, it's the charging port so I gotta get that soldered I'm gonna pull out the soldering iron and see how it goes Wait for the soldering iron to heat up. It's a good thing about these Hakko irons is they're pretty fast. Now I'm gonna have to do this weirdly. And put this in here. Actually, can I use this? Coming up to will reach. Uh, part of a zip wire so those are connected wires that took a pull 
part, mostly because it's the only wire I have that can uh, it's actually the oh it didn't even stick. <laughs> Gotta try that again. Oh boy. It adheres. Let's see, there we go. And then do that a little more. And let me see here if I can get this right. Adjust it. All right. Now, this guy. So I wrapped the top one in electrical tape, nice uh, color, and then I strung this heat shrink here and just kind of protect it, protect the open wire. I do not own a heat gun. So I do it the old-fashioned way, which is with a lighter. And this stuff is insulated to some few hundred degrees, so I don't feel bad doing that. There you go. And that is the charging port. You can see here it has this little waterproof plug. And do I have one here? Yeah, I have a. So let's take, for example, this. This is a 5.5 by 2.1. Just go in there. So that's what I'm doing. It would take either solar panel or um, battery charging, uh, like my IMAX B6 uh, lithium charger. I would make cables that use this kind of port. So there's no confusion. The original battery, if you remember, had uh, just a power pole. And uh, having a power pole for both charging and for the load could be confusing. You might use the wrong one. So I wanted to isolate this. This, uh, this little plug here, this, this port, is uh, rated for 10 amps. So. I don't have anything really that goes that high, but um, that's what this is for. Hello again. It's the next day, and I was up till probably 3 a.m. finishing the box. I uh, actually called it quits, and I decided, okay, I, I'm done with the power pole connectors. Those were very hard. I think I'm just going to call it a night and continue in the morning. And then I got a second wind. I was just uh, on my computer reading more on how to work a relay, how to wire a relay, I mean. And it came out to, uh, you know, some confusion around that, those numbers on the relay, the 30 
87 a 87 85 86 and then finally I got it there were actually some conflicting references on this and uh, but finally I got it and when I when it made sense I got a second wind and I was like okay I'm just gonna do this so I spent a lot of the night cutting splicing cabling and um, you know just kind of tidying everything up and when you see this, it's, it's not that tidy. It's kind of a hack job, as I always say. But it was, uh, I was done at around 3 in the morning. It all worked, and I was very happy. So uh, that's why you're seeing a, a whole different me right now. Um, you saw me at night when I, was, when I started this, and now here I am again. So let's take a look. Here we are, and it's about time we open this thing up. And so there we go. What we have here is a mess of wiring. I put in a, let me turn this a little bit for you. Put a relay in here, you can see it's an automotive relay. It's just Velcroed on there. You use quite a bit of liquid, um, what do you call that? Liquid electrical tape around the inside of this uh, sensor box so that a uh, little bit of waterproofing there. You're familiar with the battery. I also have, uh, this is the hall sensor I'm talking about here. And the wiring goes through that so it comes off of the the old um, thing I set up here, which is the power pole connector, the battery used to be just this, and I added a second set of power poles, and you can see here, kind of made a Y connection here, a Y splitter. I really couldn't figure out how to wire this thing, because I've seen uh, where they have a pair of wires, the negative and positive, and then a short little loop that goes to the other one. But my wire's too thick for that, and so I was puzzling how I was able to get all that wire into a single 45 amp power pole connector um, plug. So I ended up having to do this, which is the, uh, the Y split. And then over here, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, this is where charging comes in. Right now it's hooked up to the solar and it's connected. I actually loop the positive of the, um, of the solar charge through the hall sensor so that I could get a reading on the input current. Got the solar panel up here. It's a 39 watt Sun Kingdom foldable solar panel and up here on the car and it goes here it's gone to the solar panel up there you can see it and shows here okay, right now it's consuming zero amps I'll turn this down here so the radio is running right now, and it, it eats about 0.7 amps when it's on and, and receiving, and this here, oops, since it thinks there's nothing happening, it turns off. But you see here, it was at uh, 13.19 uh, volts, and now it's going up slightly. This is zero amps because there's input current right now from the solar panel and that's going right out to the radio. Now if I turn off the radio here, you'll see this thing says, no, well, it's not catching up. <laughs> it's not doing what I thought it would do. There it goes. It's 
receiving some current and it's going up slightly. It shows it every once in a while because I think the hull sensor on this thing is actually uh, not sensitive to the decimal of amps since it is a 100 amp um, sensor. So I disconnected the Yaesu 857 from its Go Box battery and I hooked it up to test the load. This thing draws about 0.7 7 or 0.8 amps when it's running idle on your seat. You can see here, got it hooked into the box. According to this, it's drawing one amp. We've also got a couple things hooked in here to the USB. Mississippi QSO party happening right now. I'm going to try to call this guy, but it's kind of a pilot. Now, what you'll notice here is that I'm relying on the relay for shut off and it did that earlier uh, it thought it reached the max um, capacity and it, it, shut it, it shut itself off and there's uh, no fusing in here now that's that is concerning to me and I'm, I, I'm still thinking maybe I'm going to uh, you know splice in some some fusing here but overall I think it's just one port I was going to do two, so if I, uh, I was going to put another one right here, but I was just thinking, man, that was difficult just doing one, and I nor normally don't use more than one, plus I have that little mini rig runner thing that um, allows me to split a single power pole connection into three more. So. I figured I'll do this for now, see if it works. If I find myself needing multiple cables to connect to this, then I may just drill another hole in here. Another concern I had, of course, is um, does this, you know, I'm not gonna be using this battery all the time. I'm gonna make sure I'm not pinching anything here. And so, does this, meter here let me get this out of the way does it have parasitic load on the battery because it never turns off it's always sensing and I imagine it does I, I did leave it on for a day once uh, with nothing connected and I noticed that it had gone down a few hundredths of a uh, of a volt in that one day so it's nothing major, I mean, as long as I plug it in every once in a while, I'll be able to see any changes and, uh, you know, top it up. And plus, it's not too good to have your battery at 100% all the time anyway. But I was thinking that I would install a kind of um, switch to actually disconnect the wire this is actually the wire right here the, these wires I don't know if you're gonna see this but I have a pair of wires here red and black that are um, what power the I think it's these two I should label these these two wires here that power the relay or power the the LCD in the sensor now I might insert in in this red wire here a disconnect so that if I'm storing this for a long time I could probably just uh, disconnect it so that there's no power draw at all on the battery while it's in storage um, but though that's some future stuff um, I also con contemplated having a, a switch for the USB so just you know 
install a normal toggle switch right here and that would allow me to power on and off the USB but again it's it's not a big deal less holes the better it's hard to make those holes I'll turn this off now here the radio is still on drawing and I don't know if you noticed but if I were to uh, doing some confusing things here let me get this out of the way so if I were to so right now let's see if I can get this in here you see that the out says it's red it has a red arrow if I turn this off if I press that the little arrow turns gray and that means that the relay has uh, turned off the, the load so it is now on uh, normally open I think that's right <laughs> and so that means um, no power is going out through this or the USB and you'll see in the USB the, the blue LED is no longer on see? but if I turn that back on you see that the, the blue light turns on so you see there the red arrow has turned back on so this is kind of the power switch the only problem is this LCD likes to turn off and the way you get it to show again is you press a button and normally a person would press OK they might end up turning off the power so just some quirky things with this LCD it does give a lot of information but it is also a little difficult to figure out Here's another view of everything. So, if I could just close up here, this is the hall sensor for measuring amps going through. This is the USB. It it's pretty uh, long because it contains a 12 volt to 5 volt uh, step down converter inside. So all you got to do is hook up 12 volts to it. So this is charging. Um, you can see here it's uh, let me pan down here a little bit so that's the charging right there that's the one you saw me solder and coming out of that is um, this is the red wire here that goes through the hall sensor and then to the to the power pole connection to the original batteries charging so that's a 10 amp charging max. It goes through that all sensor so that it can measure the input current. This here is rated for 10 amps. And so I think we're good there. Uh, there's a jumble of wiring. I just kind of all shoved it in there. The thing is, the dimensions of this case are exactly what I need these standoffs here kind of press against the sides of the case so it's it's not moving it's it's solid in there it does not move around I had to actually just push it in and so that's pretty cool and that's the main reason I got this case because it was I did measurements and this is the exacting measurements of the interior dimensions that I needed now, I didn't have much, as much clearance as I wanted, but that's all right. I made it work. There is still room here. It's not as clean and organized as some other builders' videos, but hey, this is my first time doing anything like this, so uh, that's what happened there. Up here, so here's my, uh, again, my, my Y-split connections to the dual power port. This is the LCD ammeter automotive relay, which allows, so these are the control wires for the relay, and this is, um, I believe it's, let me see if I trace it. This is battery, so the bottom one is from power source, and then the top one is to load. And so I split that out 
and one part of it goes to here. So that's the smaller cable here goes to USB. The larger cable goes to power pole. Now if you look closely here, I did a little bit of uh, waterproofing. I used uh, liquid electrical tape and I, I think I was a little generous with it. It was pretty messy. But I pretty much sealed this and what I'm going to do on the front as well is I'm going to, uh, I have this uh, tape that you can apply. People normally use it for protecting their phones. I'm just going to put a film of, the, of that over this. So these edges, I think, are pretty much sealed because of the electrical, liquid electrical tape. But this uh, is susceptible to water. I don't really imagine this is waterproof. So I'm just going to cover that. And it's probably going to look kind of messy because it's going to be an additional piece of plastic. It's like, hey, why don't you just peel off the plastic? No, it's going to be there for a purpose. So everything here, that closes, that closes there, this closes, the charging port thing closes, oh, can't get it, there we go. So everything seals the water resistance. So I can comfortably take this thing out in the rain and uh, short of connecting it the moment I do this and connect something then it's susceptible to rain again but in its stored closed state it will be all right fire this up again so you can see Ooh, it's on so there you go Voltage is slowly climbing because the solar is connected right now. So pretty simple, straightforward. How come it's not opening as wide as before? <laughs> Again, this is Velcroed in. Velcro. Um, let me do it for you here so you can see. Okay. Just makes it easier. And uh, what more can I say? That's the internals of the battery box. And there you go. It's a 15 amp hour, I think 192 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery box with power pole, 12 volt connections, and a 4.2 amp. USB port with two USB connections and a charging port that has the 5.5 by 2.1 um, connector which is typical on most portable solar um, folding solar panels that you get at least my the mine it came with a cable that has a an out that is 5.5 by 2.1 and so, you know, it, it all came together, and now I have this um, <laughs> pretty pricey homemade version of a battery. I could have just bought a 20 amp hour commercial one like a BioNO for a lot less. All in all, I think in parts, it came out to... Uh, is around $34 a cell and all the different parts. I actually bought a lot of parts that I didn't need. I, I took a look at them and I realized that I wasn't going to use them. They wouldn't work. Now let me see if I could find some of these around here. Uh, like this. This is a um, 12 volt to 5 volt step down converter. Couldn't get it to work. I think uh, current may have been too strong I don't know couldn't figure it out so and turns out that the USB panel that I had or what panel yeah panel mount that I had already had a built-in 12 volt to 5 volt 
uh, converter in it. Um, so I was like, okay, I didn't need that. Bought a switch. I was going to uh, install this right next to the LCD so that I could disconnect uh, any power to the LCD. But I didn't like the switch. It goes too far in and with all the connections it would have been like really far into the box. Uh, I just got to find a simple rocker switch like this that has a low profile in the back and, and just put that in. Um, I almost ran out of wire. <laughs> That's another thing. You don't realize, I mean, I, I, I used mostly uh, 12 gauge wire and then I also had a zip wire, that, that's the wire that's connected together. Um, I think that one was uh, maybe eight, uh, 16 gauge and that was for the lower part of things like the USB and uh, the charging. But anything that had load I was using this um, 12, um, 12 gauge wire and that was quite uh, I found myself going through a lot more of it than I thought. I had about uh, six feet of it and I used almost all of it for some reason. And there were a few mistakes here and there. Here's one of my mistakes. I don't know if you could see that. I just snipped it right off. Let me see here. You can't see it because of the focus. But this was my attempt to do a split. So this was the wire going to the top power pole or this one was the wire going to the top power pole and then I was going to do like a little U and then another connector. This was too thick. Wouldn't go inside. So great electronics learning experience and I definitely had fun doing this. Otherwise why would I be up at 3 in the morning working on this? When I was done I was like gee great. Got a 15 amp hour battery. My go box has 20 amp hours and I have a 30 amp hour battery that doesn't need a box or is not in a box right now. Um, why did I just do that? <laughs> but looking at the final product, I'm pretty happy. So um, I hope you guys got something out of this and um, I hope that uh, you give this a try. Uh, find a way to... Um, Get some do-it-yourself electronics, and uh, I think you might really enjoy it. I learned a lot in this, mostly about current. Oh, I got to mention this too. <laughs> you got to be very careful when you're doing this stuff. I think I, I think I almost fried the battery a couple times. Um, so the charging port, I got to do something about this. It, it has a temp, a 10 amp protection from the BMS, so. It has short circuit protection as well, but it is live and for whatever reason even though it's the charging port It allows power to be drawn from it So I had these I put it away. I think I had this alligator here. It is <laughs> Had this alligator thing so this was hooked into the charging port these alligator clips and I was using that with the uh, the IMAX B6 battery charger um, <sighs> turned off the tracking on this it was getting weird anyway so I had this thing and I uh, disconnected the alligator clips and then had one of these on the table now you can imagine what's about to happen here and they just kind of like oh, don't touched really quick Boop. suddenly I hear, you know, sparks and then smoke like this, this uh, insulation singed and there was smoke coming out of it. It was really quick. I didn't even know what happened, but yeah, somehow I uh, almost shorted the thing. This thing is hot. It's live. And so you need to be very careful when working with this. Cover everything you can with Kapton tape. Don't have bus bars laying around on the table, especially where there's leads all over the place. So, um, yeah, that's actually the second time that happened. The other time was when the battery was out and um, 
metal touch the uh, an unprotected terminal. It was two of the batteries that kind of connected. Oh boy. Why do I do this? I don't really know what I'm doing. So, uh, if you're deciding to work with these these high capacity batteries, I really, really strongly encourage you to be safe. You have to cover the terminals. Make sure things aren't connected when they don't need to be. Look out for loose metal. And uh, yeah, otherwise you can really uh, fry some electronics. It wasn't so much, I wasn't so concerned about the batteries blowing up or anything like that, but I was concerned about um, damaging the electronics that I, I was putting into this. I, I didn't want to fry the BMS, I didn't want to fry these uh, panel mounts or any of the components that I, I put in. So, very careful. You need to be very careful. Anyway, uh, I guess that's all I got. So, thank you very much for watching. Um, and I'll see you guys on the air, I guess. I still have the other battery. It's the uh, 8 cell 30 amp hour battery. And that one, I'm uh, still trying to figure out I think that one's just going to stay at home and I'm not going to put too much into making it transportable and portable like this one. But this one's going with me. It's going to power a lot of things, so I'm very uh, excited about that. Figures when I'm recording that there's some horn going off in the distance. Figures when I'm recording video there's some horn going off in the distance. It's a nice Saturday out today. There's a lot of neighbors out right now talking and stuff. I can hear them. And um, it's kind of overcast. Looks like it might rain. The clouds look kind of angry. But it's really sunny. That's why the solar panel is out right now. And uh, so I'm just going to go out and uh, see what I can do with this battery. Thanks for watching, everyone. And uh, be sure to like and subscribe and uh, follow me on Twitter. Thanks a lot. 7-3, this is AD6DM, Dennis, and I'll talk to you again soon.